Welcome back to System Shock. We've just completed the Delta Grove, hitting the launch override inside of it. Now we've just arrived at Alpha Grove, let's go find that switch. I'm going to leave behind my shotgun and the accelerator railgun, just to save some inventory space. I think the guns that I have remaining should be plenty for pretty much anything. This should be good against fleshy opponents, and then now I have some ammunition for the Magpulse rifle. Let's double pump it. That should be good against anything armored. I wonder if it's going to have the same sort of things we saw in Alpha Grove. Or Delta Grove, rather. Or if it's going to have something different. Alright, gotta be on the lookout for the pterodactyls. I wonder if this grove will also have a chess game. Target identifier V3. I already have that. And I still never use it. One of these days. Who am I getting? I'll never use it. There's ammo? Could be a floor above me, or it might be a hiding in the bushes? Shows it as being like- oh yeah, right there! Tricky, tricky. Oh my god! Jesus, I didn't see you! are too quiet. They need more noises. Please. Oh, no. Oh, I see you. have any more ammunition for this. Not for this type, anyway. I might have some penetrator rounds, but I think pretty much everything we're going to face is going to be fleshy, actually. Oh, hello. Plant. Oh, I don't have any more ammunition to reload this with, either. I don't want your damn chip bag. Oh, hello. I have an idea.
think I saw the shadows from a wing. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> Missed both. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't want to use penetrator rounds. I mean, is MacPulse going to do anything against a biological enemy? I guess we're about to find out. Not much. Penetrator rounds it is. Okay, that was effective. There's ammunition here, but it must be a floor below me. I think I'm going to go back and grab the shotgun. I think I have 10 shots for the shotgun for this ammo type, and then I think two of the dragon's breath rounds. So not great, but it's something. Let's pick a direction. Oh, that's the room for the safety interlocks. I think the door's locked, though. Eh, there's got to be another way in, or a switch to open that door. Whoa! What was that? Is it from, like, did I get hang time because of going up these stairs? Let's try that again. No, not really. Huh. Fun as hell, though. something robotic. It could be a camera moving, though. Yeah, what is... Oh, it's that. It is technically a camera, but I think one that doesn't do anything. Oh, there's a case down there. That usually means there's something really good inside of it. Hopefully an environmental protection suit? That looks like a washing machine. Ion pulse rifle. Oh, hello. I was expecting a new weapon. Is that even going to fit? Hold down left click to charge. Fire is on release. T to change the power setting. Oh, does that use energy? Ion beam burst uses or damage type is energy. 35 damage. Kind of meaningless, though, because you can charge it, so it probably the damage probably depends on how much you charge it. Uses 7 jewels. Not really sure how much that is. Right now I have 223 energy, so 7 jewels is not really that much of it. But it's on low right now, so of course it's going to use more if I up it. Prototypes of the RW-45 evolved from late model Xenon Ion sidearms. Its variable charge mode allows the user to hold the trigger down to have complete control over the power level of the beam. High energy bursts are powerful but unpredictable, scattering the beam off of metal surfaces. Could hurt myself then. Oh, this one, it's much easier to see what the power setting is compared to the whatever the other energy weapon is that I haven't used since the beginning of the game. That one was never clear. Um, when you change the power settings, does is it reflected here in the damage? Yes, it is. On the highest, it does 200 damage, 90% armor penetration, and uses 70 jewels, which is going to be like a third of my energy. But you can also charge it. Like, hold down the trigger to have complete control over the power level of the beam. 
How does that interface with the damage numbers that it shows and the different power levels you can set though? Like if you set it to low and then you charge it for a long time, is it going to use more energy than what it says it uses for low? Let's just try clicking. That looks really cool. Does this thing overheat? Can I just... It looks like it does heat up. I saw the green bar on the weapon display going up. But on low settings, I don't think you're really going to overheat. Okay, now let's try charging it. Wait. Holding it on left click didn't do anything other than shoot. What charge? What about medium? That bounced, didn't it? Hard to tell. And I don't want to try high because that's going to waste so much of my energy. Anyway, this thing basically seems like a much better version of the spark beam. Larger, but a lot more damage. And a lot cooler. Energy weapons are cool again? Okay, what do we got here? Is there a combat booster? Meh. What's this? Stamina up stimulant. Those are really not very impressive. Those are just very standard pickups. But whatever. This weapon is the cool part. Even if it wasn't in the briefcase. Four shots, nice. Ah. model it's like someone drank themselves to death yeah <laughs> the melee weapon is probably a lot more energy efficient. Since there's ammunition here, it must be up there. Well, you know what? Let's go get it. Yeah, there you are. Oh, Dragon's Breath rounds. Nice. Gonna go back to do ammunition. Instead of using energy, because I'm very low on energy and I don't think I have any battery packs on me. No, I don't. Silent creepy bastard. This room makes me uncomfortable. It feels like a boss room or something.
Level security, 12%. Probably just one. Oh no, 0%. No more cameras. Something just spoke. Okay, safety interlock door is now open. Pulse rifle. No thanks. Oh, it's a reflex reaction aid. One of the slow mo things. I actually don't have room for it. Okay, I'm just going to start tossing the ID tags out just wherever, or maybe never even picking them up in the first place. They're just too frequent. They just keep clogging up my inventory. I might take this mini pistol. Oh, I don't have room for it. Ah, you know what? Forget it. I'll be fine. I can just go find the scorpion. Eventually. Safety interlocks. Oh! Two down, one more to go. Was looking through the notes that I've left on the map, and in storage, I left a note that there's a magnum damage mod that requires 25 coins. Well, I'm pretty much rich, so yes please. Upgrades the magnum pistol, increases damage, and adds a laser sight. I'm on the maintenance level now. I've dropped some of my weapons, shuffled some things around, put some things in the cargo lift, and now I have my beautiful scorpion back. Which is great because I haven't had any weapon that uses the standard, what is it, yeah, 9mm rounds for quite a while, so I have 235 standard rounds and 288 of the Teflon coated rounds that have built up. Yeah, I dropped a bunch of stuff because inventory space has just been so cramped. Oh, and while in maintenance, I was thinking the whole Diego teleportation thing, how it said that they're, the other end of their teleportation is somewhere near the entrance and maintenance. Now there's three entrances to maintenance, so I don't know specifically which one they're talking about. But I was just exploring around, and there's actually a place that I never explored. This, up here, I apparently never went up this ladder. sad. Right, since I didn't find anything on the maintenance level about Diego or anything like that, nothing seems to have changed, I don't actually have any idea where an upgraded environmental protection pack might be. I have no leads, 
So we're just going to go to Beta Grove. I'm going to just take the pain and let's hope it's not the entire grove that has biological contamination. It probably is, but let's hope it's just the entrance. Uh, I have two first aids and two meta patches. I really can't take my time here. I mean, the biological contamination is only at about 22, which isn't the worst. I think it can go over 100. At least radiation can. So we might be okay? I don't know. Let's just go with it. Let's make a save. No dawdling. I am for sure going to die. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Ah, oh, but I don't have power to get across there! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna die. Now I know where to go, though. So I think I'm gonna have to just sprint to get here. Oh, an upgrade for something. Don't know what. I'll take it. Here we go. Safety interlocks disabled. Okay. Now let's get the hell out of here. Open up. Okay. Jesus Christ. I really want to fully explore that place. I gotta wait till I find an environmental protection pack. Now that we've done the individual jettison control switches inside each grove, we should be able to activate the master jettison unlock inside of Diego's room. Safety interlocks still engaged. Okay, I'm going to cut out a ton of footage so that I don't waste your time, so let me bring you up to speed. I thought I had disabled all of the safety interlocks in each grove, and I did on camera. However, at the end of Delta Grove, off camera, when I was just about to leave and figure out what to do next, uh, I got a crash, and my previous save was from the very beginning when I had just come into Delta Grove. So I hadn't actually accomplished anything once I loaded that save. So I decided to just do a quick speed run of Delta Grove, running through it, killing enemies, and just not bothering to pick pretty much anything up. And I thought I had hit the safety interlock again, but I was mistaken. I had hit the button that opens the door to the where you disable the safety interlock, but I didn't actually disable the safety interlock itself. So that was my mistake, and it led me on a wild goose chase of looking at walkthroughs and solutions and trying to figure out what had happened until the point where I was starting to think that I had just bugged the game. Nope, I just made a mistake. So, oh, also off camera, it turns out that uh, there's a secret teleporter in Diego's room. Not really that secret. I just had completely missed it. I think when I when I press one of the buttons in Diego's room, it opens the door, and I hadn't realized that. But it leads to this teleporter that basically just makes it easy to leave Diego's room. So this is like Diego's zone, and if you go back the way you came in, you got to go all the way around here, and then you got to crouch through this extremely long little like ductwork, and it just takes forever. So this teleporter just takes you from here to here. So it's just a quick exit. Now that all of these safety interlocks are disabled in the individual groves, this master lock or master jettison enable control should now kind of work. Jettison enable failure. Possible cause. 
Damage to power relay. Consult diagnostic report in repair bay level three for detailed analysis. Okay, now some of the tips and tricks that I was reading online actually make sense. They were saying you got to go to maintenance and fix some stuff and off camera I tried going there and seeing if I could do any of that and I couldn't access any of it and I was so confused. But yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. You get that message, they tell you there's something broken in maintenance and now that I've triggered that, I can actually go to maintenance and actually fix it. I believe inside of this repair bay, there's a machine here. Diagnosis ready and I should actually be able to use this. Yes. Oh, I love the way it spins. And it gives you a gigantic disc. Oh, that's such a cool device. Power systems failure. Malfunction in subsystem relay 428. For repair instructions, please consult relay analyzer. Be sure to specify relay number for analysis. Maintenance corridors are now accessible. Alright, and with that, these previously inaccessible corridors like this one up here, Alpha Maintenance, Gamma Maintenance, those should now work and I should actually be able to progress. <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm sure it doesn't seem like that big of a thing to you, but I think I've recorded for like two hours and this episode's probably going to be cut down to like 20 or 30 minutes. So I am so relieved. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to fix some stuff so we can jettison the groves.